June 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Corinthians, Chapter 5, from the New Testament. It is actually reported that sexual immorality exists among you, the kind of immorality that is not permitted even among the Gentiles, so that someone is cohabitating with his father's wife. And you are proud. Shouldn't you have been deeply sorrowful instead and remove the one who did this from among you? For even though I am absent physically, I am present in spirit. And I have already judged the one who did this just as though I were present. When you gather together in the name of our Lord Jesus and I am with you in spirit, along with the power of our Lord Jesus, turn this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast affects the whole batch of dough? Clean out the old yeast so that you may be a new batch of dough. You are, in fact, without yeast. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. So then let us celebrate the festival, not with the old yeast, the yeast of vice and evil, but with the bread without yeast, the bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. In no way did I mean the immoral people of this world, or the greedy and swindlers and idolaters, since you would then have to go out of the world. But now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who calls himself a Christian, who is sexually immoral, or greedy, or an idolater, or verbally abusive, or a drunkard, or a swindler. Do not even eat with such a person. For what do I have to do with judging those outside? Are you not to judge those inside? But God will judge those outside. Remove the evil person from among you. God, I apologize sincerely on behalf of the Christian church. Our apathy towards sin is exactly what you're talking about here. Asking us not to associate with anyone who, and you have a list of things. And you're not talking about, or in this case, Paul, for you, is not talking about the sin that we do day in and day out. Uh, We're sinful creatures, and we're going to mess up. But unrepentant sin is what he's referring to. And if we continue to associate with people who don't, turn back from their ways once we go through the process of talking to them and then if they won't listen bringing another person in if they won't listen then you know going to the pastor of the church and having that group of people talk to them if we don't deal with sin within our own church unrepentant sin within our own church it appears as though we're okay in it and I'm watching a lot of churches do this right now They're smoothing over a lot of the sins in the Bible so that people feel welcome to come to church. Are you joking me? It is not a calling to be a Christian so that you can have perpetual sin in your life. That's that's not why you made us, God. That is just crazy. And here, your churches, well, technically, I guess they're not your churches if they're breaking that, but... The churches that are calling themselves Christian are making it okay for people to have this unrepentant sin, whether it's financial, uh, sexual, egotistical, all these different idols that we have. And, and again, God, I know that you're not talking about us as sinners. Uh, I know that you're talking about people who just won't turn away from their sin after the church has done their due diligence. You're asking us not to do that because it looks like we're approving of those sins. It could also be tempting newer Christians as well, or perhaps older Christians as well, depending upon what the sin is. I know your churches need to be clean, God. I know your leadership needs to be clean. I know the people within the church need to be clean. And I know we work on it day in and day out because we always fall short of that expectation. And it is only by your grace that we are forgiven of those day in and day out sins. God, I just ask that you search my life and you search my heart. And if there's anything in there that is unrepentant sin, habitual sin, please show it to me. Please help me remove it. 
give me the strength, the desire, the opportunity to remove it. I want to please you. I want your church to be strong. I want the, the name of Jesus Christ to not be diluted. I want it to stand for everything that your son is and everything that you are. God, I love you very much. In your perfect son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>